This episode will be very emotional. And that's why. Холодно. 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 Очень холодно. 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 Холодно на улице. Холодно. Холодно. Но очень холодно. Холодно. Cold. Where am I? And what's going on anyway? Well, this is how it started. I decided to risk it all and went to Yakutsk, the coldest city on the entire globe. Winter temperatures often drop below minus 50 degrees Celsius here. Minus 50! Just think of it. I wonder, if you spit on the ground, would your saliva freeze in the air? Yeah! Holy crap, the spit freezes before it drops. The truth is, all of the locals told me I was extremely lucky with the weather, because I visited Yakutsk in a very warm winter. Only minus 40 outside. You heard right. All in all. Like a bat out of hell, I rushed out of the airport terminal straight into the cab driver's car. I didn't feel the catastrophically low temperature then. This was just at the beginning. The worst was yet to come. Here I am in Yakutsk. A little tired after the 14-hour trip, but that's okay. Now a 40-degree Yakutia frost should make me perk up. I'm going outside for the first time. It is kind of scary. I'm going to put on this pile of clothes. It's minus 40 outside nevertheless, so I have to be up in arms. Well, first experience. Not even killed by frost when I went outside. Well, it is chilly in minus 40, it is chilly. The time in Yakutsk is 6 hours different from St. Petersburg's. Due to the super abrupt regime change, you will see my eye bruises throughout the whole video. Well, it couldn't be helped. I had to make my first going out for food, and there was some very unusual scenery along the way. I had never seen snow like this before. Have a look at these wires. Not a fly, not even a bird seemed to be sitting on them. By the way, you encounter no animals or birds in the street at all. Also, here are no people. Probably it's very cold. Even no cheeky pigeon once passed by in search of free breadcrumbs. Honestly, the city seemed to be the one described in children's Russian winter tales. The houses, the roofs, the tree branches bending to the ground under the weight of their snow caps. Very beautiful. The only thing is that it is always foggy in Yakutsk in winter, and the colder it gets, the thicker and more impenetrable the fog is. On particularly foggy days, locals even refrain from driving, because nothing can be seen 5 meters away. By the way, the majority of cars here are right steering and all have double-pane windows, apparently to be more cold-resistant. In minus 50, you can't walk much on foot, so you can't pick and choose by car or on foot. On the first day I saw a unique local invention – car blankets. They are used by those who do not have garages or insulated parking places. At minus 50, it can be quite difficult to start a car that has been parked outside for 22 hours. So the Yakuts invented this kind of cape, popularly called Natasha's. Why? A cab driver told me this secret. The firma that makes blankets is called Natasha. That's what they called its products. 
Natasha sometimes gets stolen, so some people sign their license plate numbers on them. In the morning, when they need to go somewhere, the locals store their cars, take the blankets off and stuff them in the trunks. Indeed, minus 50 is a permanent disaster for a lot of equipment, including my fly. <laughs> A drone cannot be launched in the fog in winter, and that maze stood with me almost every day. Although it is extremely dangerous to fly in this temperature, even in a fogless weather. And my poor little fly is still being sad in a backpack with me. All in all, we will admire all this beauty from the ground, although not for a very long time. To tell the truth, for the first 10 minutes outside I have not frozen up. Well, I have walked to the store, 5 minutes there and 5 minutes back. So far, I feel like I can leave. Ugh. I was super curious about what the locals were wearing, how they were able to withstand such low temperatures. But there were no people outside, which was a surprise. Literally a couple of people a minute passed by me, and I wanted to capture each of them, even though there was nothing remarkable about their appearance. Ordinary people in ordinary jackets and gloves and boots, probably running home from a bus stop or running to a bus stop to go about their business. In my desire to meet Yakuts, I went to Central Lenin Square, Sunday afternoon. There were hardly any people on the street at all. I came to the main Central Square to at least look at them, and there were so few of them. Indeed, this was the exact and not enjoyable minus 40 scenery. An empty square! A couple of tourists at the Christmas tree and no one else. It felt like in a post-apocalyptic movie. Bitter cold, thick fog and no one around. But I kept my head up and made my way to the slide in the opposite side, where I managed to capture vacationing families. Just think, riding down the hill in minus 40. Oh, beautiful! Anyway, I didn't dare. But it wasn't just the kids who were rocking out. Someone's dad decided to slide off on his feet, which he didn't do very gracefully, but still, I would have done exactly the same way. Someone's mom decided to try a slide without a snow saucer. Yeah, not far off. A snow saucer was much better. Well, try it. Here we go. A different story. Nobody even made that far. And also, a boy talked to me. He was very afraid. but nevertheless conquered his personal summit. A few times. Though his strength gave out then. Here are the people. Some in fur coats, fur hats or aunts. The expensive and admittedly more beautiful analog over the usual Russian felt boots. It is remarkable that most people don't cover hide noses and mouths in scarves, and many have no problem inhaling that icy air. But I didn't dare. If my nostrils had a tube in feature, they would use it immediately, believe me. I warmed up like the locals, in stores and shopping malls. And judging by the goods, the Yakuts love Japan very much. Even in regular grocery stores you can find a lot of Japanese noodles, soda and something else of unknown nature. Here I found an outlet with authentic Japanese sweets. My first thought was 
I want to taste them. Second thought, what the hell is this? Fortunately, every item, even the smallest gum, had price tags with the Russian names. Having bought all of the groceries, I couldn't wait to open them all at home. There were also a lot of Pikachu and other anime products in addition to groceries. As to the rest, nothing out of the ordinary. Clothes, toys, hats, coffee to go. After being in the mall for over an hour, I thought I had warmed up enough. But I couldn't stay more than five minutes outside. I had to go home. After that, I dared to do another feat and went to the main peasant market of the city to freeze further. If you've even looked at Yakutia pictures on the internet, I bet you've seen this place. It's a unique one. At the entrance, you will definitely come across a severed horse's head. And under the open sky, hundreds of fish stand at attention. Yes, they do. In rows. This is because when a fish is taken out of the water in minus 40, it immediately freezes in natural conditions. Small fish don't look so impressive, but one and a half meter ones are very impressive. They also sell all kinds of meat here. Venison, cold, even skinned and unskinned hairs. And I saw a couple of geese with their necks wrinkled. Luckily, I don't eat fish, and as for meat, I eat it very, very rare. What is more, they sell frozen berries, for example, strawberries and blueberries. I thought that the sellers would not be happy to see another blogger with a huge camera because every tourist thinks it is a duty to come here and wave a phone or a camera in their faces. At first I filmed them from afar, but I was pretty quickly unmasked, <laughs> with absolutely no negativity indeed. A lot of people chatted with me, I asked everyone how they managed to be outside all day in minus 40 or minus 50 or even colder temperatures. Как вы здесь стоите весь день рабочий? Как вы здесь стоите весь день? Да. Же... Откуда приехали? Из Санкт-Петербурга. Санкт-Петербурга. У нас а ноль сейчас. Там. Да, рыбы там такой нет у вас. Нету. They said they had got adjusted. When you keep moving, you stay warm. The guys, however, are dressed accordingly. Some even stand on reindeer skins to keep their feet warm. Извините, а можно вас снять на видео? Вот так? Чтоб видно было, как вы одеты. Откуда? Я из Питера. У нас ноль сейчас. Сегодня тепло, 39. Тепло, 39. Вот дома же видно, а так 50 было бы, здесь вообще ничего не видно было бы, тумана много. Вот дома не, не видно будет. Сейчас тепло. Жара. Жара. Теплая зима называется у нас. Да уж. Got it right? It is warm today in minus 40. The Yakuts are amazing people after all. After filming everything in the market square, I walked on to a cubby hole from which I hadn't been seen before. I stood there, silently taking pictures of the fish with their mouths opened, and the local seller came up to me and asked in very poor English where I was from. The embarrassed, I replied in Russian. Is Peter? Ah. And the English-speaking Yakut quickly retreated, while his companion and I were sniggling. <laughs> In the meantime, frozen to the bone, if I can even say that, I decided to go and see the largest year-round exhibition of ice sculptures.
in Yakutia you can find them almost everywhere. In squares, near temples and restaurants, but the largest collection is gathered in a special heated complex. It's quite a place to warm up after some time out, as the temperature inside is only about minus 5. This is the kind of ice beauty at the entrance on the ceiling, and the sound of the ice breaking off. Listen to it for yourself. Funny thing is that the temperature at the entrance is lower than in the complex itself, so the sculptures are covered with frost or snow, which looks pretty funny. Since the icy snowman is frozen here, what do you want me to do? That's what my only camera thought when I pulled it out, getting ready to shoot. Luckily, I warmed it up, so you have an almost unique opportunity to view this beauty. What a lot there is to see! The residence of Dead Maros, where he stands next to Yakutia Snigurechka, and an ice box, where some of the letters written by children go. If you behave badly, the letter will go to this box, and Jet Maros will give you only ice cubes for lemonade. Jet Maros is like Santa Claus for Russian children. There is also a kingdom of Yakut Lord of Cold, called uh, Chis Chishan. Oh my god, I can barely pronounce it. Everyone has own personal ice throne with reindeer skins. My butt like the throne from Game of Thrones the best, which is also very much to the point. You can post in the comments which one you like to the look of. And if the throne isn't enough for you, here is a nice bed, which may be used for intended purpose if only you really want to get pneumonia or cystitis. At first I thought the mattress was real, because of the unusual way the light reflected in it, but it turned out to be of ice either. In general, the bed fits Detmaros very well. I'm sure he sleeps here while the complex is closed and no one sees him. But my favorite hall is definitely this one. The Ice Age. It's so cute. Here is a squirrel ready to destroy the entire planet because of a nut. And the freestanding nut. I hope it doesn't catch the squirrel's attention. And see the sloth, Diego the tiger, many, the mammoth surrounded by possums. A total delight, in short. And you may even see a real mammoth skull here. The ice tusks look pretty offensive. Spot on! Nearby lie several of its teeth, bones and a couple of skulls of the same ancient creatures. A few more cool rooms to visit. Ancient people, a bit of architecture, a hall for lovers. What a pity I came here all alone. And of course, some most important hallmarks of Yakutsk fish and deer. But the true fun a big fancy ice slide was saved for last. That was so cool! I really wanted to slide down! And... Только бы не ударить камеру! And more! And more! It was 
was really cool. <laughs> I also walked on the ice skating rink. I don't know why it was here, since there was no skater until nearby. No matter. Speaking of mammoths, there is a museum in Yakutsk, but only one exhibit, a huge skeleton of a real mammoth next to an artificial stuffed mammoth was interesting for me. And that's what I saw there. Very close to the museum there was a gorgeous exhibit outside, a skeleton of the real whale. Of course, the whale wasn't a mammoth, but oh, it would have to be the one. Next to it there were some very strange looking art objects, and unfortunately I didn't find out what they were. And then, all of a sudden, there was the sound of bells ringing. It turned out that there was a little church with a bell tower right around the corner of the museum. Having heard this music, I couldn't help but go to the old and well-preserved part of town with the wooden houses and the big ancient cathedral. I had seen people on the street even occasionally, but there they were absent at all. Deserted, atmospheric streets with snow-soaked benches, and not a single person around. Ощущение постапокалипсиса. Супер холодно, все в снегу, в тумане, и не души вокруг. Nevertheless, many houses had signs stores, beauty salons, restaurants, and I'm going to tell you just about one restaurant that is definitely a must-visit place. I'm talking about the whole ethno complex called Chochur Muran. It resembles an old Russian village. Wooden huts and figures, carved tables, animal skins, and a lot of forged decoration. There is also the world's first thermometer with a scale indicating the degree of cold or heat. Set of attractions depends on the time of the year. In winter, for example, one may take a picture of numerous ice sculptures and take a ride on a dog sled. You have to pay 300 rubles for a 3-minute lap, which is not expensive for this kind of entertainment. I would say that the sled ride gave me any unprecedented pleasure. The dogs were still well-conditioned and cute, and you could take pictures with them here. For some reason, there was a helicopter. It was orange. It was funny. The restaurant itself is one of the log houses. Its interior amazes from the very beginning. There are ancient bells, ancient maps, a very time-worn grand piano 
with wired phones and the bobbin tape recorder. And also an old motorcycle. Men will probably appreciate it. To be honest, I do not know anything about them. Here I suddenly came across a vending machine with souvenir coins. But oh, у меня появилась большущая проблема. Я хочу купить сувенирную монетку, а продают их только за наличные. А у меня наличных ноль рублей и ноль копеек. В итоге я как не знаю кто хожу и спрашиваю у прохожих, нет ли у них трехсот рублей наличными. И пока безуспешно. Но мне очень нужна эта монетка. Stupid machine. Who has cash nowadays? Ура! Мне нашли 300 рублей наличными. Ура, ура, ура. Зараза. Я беру вот эту. And then... The most unfair thing in the world happened that shook me to the core. You know the feeling when you lose something and look for it where it should be. You look in the same place five times. Then you look in other places with no success and you check the same place again. The exact thing happened to me as the machine stole my money, getting away without a coin. Can you imagine? I spent half an hour looking for some cash and the iron monster mercilessly killed the only chance to bring a souvenir to my mom. Нашли наличные. Ура! Ну что, дубль два. Mm -hmm. Я надеюсь, в этот раз он будет более успешным. You got that right. The administrator found some more paper money from one of the colleagues. So I decided to take a second chance. Удачи мне. О да, хоть в этот раз мне повезло. <laughs> Монета за 600 рублей. Yes, now I have a personal score with this machine. Then, after such adventures, I frankly had no desire to dine. So I just bought some meat things to take away with me. But still decided to go into the hall, just in case something else interesting could be found there. And oh my god, how nice that I saw it! The best exhibits were right there. A little bit of natural stuff, a clock in the form of a steering wheel, and a model of a ship behind the glass, and stuffed fish hanging around. That must be a pike. And there's a real chase. It's about to swallow the little one. Gorgeous. Really, I can't imagine how the fish feel in the aquarium with such a view. In the next half of the hall, stuffed animals were exhibited. Oh, it's an elk! Wow, a big one! Compare that big guy to the wolf hanging next to it. Very authentic and beautiful. You can also see the heads of a deer, a ram, and another pair of wolf and elk hair. Oh, thanks god they're not real. They look intimidating. So the exhibition of guns to protect against these animals fit in here very well. In short, the complex is just incredible and must visit for absolutely every tourist. However, the same applies to the next place I visited.